some of you have asked me for some uh, more advanced routing features and uh, using matrices is one way to send audio to a few different places and there's a link up here and in the description for the video I did with the matrices but sometimes that's not enough so today we will take a look at some more advanced routing features so let's dive into the LV1 so I have designed this as a corporate event and if you are doing a corporate event you should absolutely download uh, this uh, template there's a link in the description uh, and 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 use it as a starting point uh, but it will obviously work for other stuff than than corporate things as well but the starting point or, or mindset if you will is from a corporate show so let's start with going through all of the inputs and outputs and then i will show you the the different uh, routing options all right so starting off first of all we have uh, eight uh, head mics and then we have uh, eight additional uh, uh, hand mics or well it could be uh, any input of course then we have four tracks of video so this is audio coming from the, the uh, video people and uh, it can be uh, films or trailers or whatever then we have four music tracks and this can be uh, it, it could be house music it could be jingles or yeah just uh, any any type of uh, of music then we have four caller uh, channels so this is if you have remote callers calling into the show uh, either uh, via phone or a zoom call or whatever so for all those then we have a dedicated house music uh, channel that we will look into a bit deeper later so those are the main inputs then we have a few utility inputs as well so here we have a or actually four producer channels so this can be the producer uh, and assistants uh, typically people running around with headsets uh, calling the shots uh, so we have all of those coming in here and then we have one extra mic for the coordinator for the uh, calls so uh, this one is mainly used for coordinating callers calling into the to the show uh, then all of these inputs are fed to groups so all of the head mics go to the head group all of the hand mics go to the this mic group uh, all video to this one music to this one callers to this one and uh, the the producer mics uh, are going to this group so up until this point it's pretty straightforward it's inputs going to groups but it's from this point uh, where we will have so, some more advanced uh, routing features so all of these or rather none of these are sent to the left right instead i use uh, axis so let's take a look at the axis for outputs so here we have this aux uh, this one is feeding the pa at the venue so people on site uh, listening to what's happening on stage this is uh, the sound that they will hear uh, this one is for the studio and the thought process behind this one is that the, the people who are doing broadcast or video might be in a separate room so uh, this one uh, will feed what they will hear they might as well be at front of house wearing headphones but wherever in the world they are this is the output for uh, for those people then we have a separate output for broadcast so this is what will be sent out or yeah will broadcast it out we have a separate output for the producer so typically this will feed the headphones uh, of the producer then we have separate outputs for uh, for the caller the people calling into the show so this one will feed what they will will hear 
Uh, we have a separate for just uh, basic recording and then we have a separate for the coordinator uh, meaning the, the the person coordinating the 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 calls into to the to the show so that's all of the inputs and the outputs so now let's have a look at how to route all of this so it makes sense so the way i would go about this is to go to the custom layer and uh, probably you will not need all of the inputs that I have prepared. You might uh, have uh, just uh, say two headsets and uh, one uh, head mic and you might have let's see let's say uh, two sources from coming from video and uh, uh, one music for jingles and uh, you might have a a caller and then the house music. So for a small corporate event, these might be the, the inputs and if you have more, just add more. Uh, so this is the layer where you will do most of the mixing during the show. And as I said, all of these inputs are fed to the groups. And it's from the groups the the actual routing is, is done. So these groups are sent to the auxes, and the auxes feed uh, all of the different places. So, uh, for instance, let's have a look at the PA. So to the PA, we are sending all of the mics, uh, the video, music, uh, the people calling into the show, but not the producer because the producer will only talk to the people within their production. Then we have the studio where the video people and the coordinators are located. To the studio we are basically sending everything including the producer. So whatever the producer uh, are saying will be heard in the studio. Then we have the broadcast and it's basically the same thing as to the PA. We are sending everything we are sending to the PA will also be sent to the broadcast with one exception that I will circle back to. The reason for the separate output for broadcast is that you might want to EQ uh, and compress things differently in the PA and in, in the broadcast and also be able to independently set the uh, volumes. Uh, right then we have the producer so this is the sound we are sending back to the headphones of the producer uh, running the show. Uh, and this will be uh, all of the head mics and, and uh, well all of the mics inputs coming from the stage. We are sending the video and music but less so the producer will hear uh, the, the, the video and music but less in volume because most of the time during the, the video there will be some preparation for what's coming next. So if we were to have the, the video volume full blast then everyone would have to shout over uh, over this volume so uh, let's have it in the producer's ears but just less and also the volume for the caller and i will circle back to this because uh, for for the caller there will be some uh, some special features um, so let's well let's skip the 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 color thing for for now and then jump to the recording and this is basically just the same thing going to the pa and to the broadcast uh, just if you want a separate output for the recording right so let's take a look at the the routing for the color because here it's some trickery going on so let's go back to custom layer one and correct a mistake i did uh, I placed the input uh, for the color here and I will actually have the uh, color group here. So there we go. Alright, so here's how you would route all of this. On this uh, custom layer we have uh, the four inputs uh, for, for people calling into the show. These are routed to the coordinator. So uh, the inputs go straight to the, the coordinator output. That way the coordinator will hear uh, the, the inputs from, from the, the people calling in, but no one else will hear the people calling in until 
we send it out uh, from the group. The inputs are sent directly to, let's see, the coordinators, uh, headphones or, or, or uh, speakers or whatever. And as soon as we want to uh, feature those colors, we will raise the, the, the group uh, fader. And that's why I wanted to place the group fader on this mixing layer. Uh, then I can just uh, mute it until it's time for, for the color to be uh, featured on the show and then un just uh, unmute. And going back to the groups, uh, the caller calling into the show will hear everything except uh, themselves. Uh, so they will obviously not need to hear their own voice. So that's why uh, this one is not sent to the, to the caller. And you actually can take this even one step further. So let's do that. Why, why not? Let's insert a matrix called color. So this matrix is uh, the, the, the volume feeding what's going back to the people calling into the show. And actually we need to turn this one off in order to make this work. So what you would do is this matrix, you will have the coordinator and this is a pre fader. So the people calling into the show will always hear the coordinator no matter what. And also the producer, you may or may not want them to, to have this. So that's absolutely optional. Then this one is the aux. Let's have a look. Uh, you are sending the, the program uh, content to uh, the caller aux. So everything except uh, themselves. This aux is then fed into this matrix coming in here. And the advantage of this is that you can actually mute this one uh, and then the people calling in will not hear uh, anything from the show. So the coordinator and the caller can have a uh, conversation and just make sure everything works. And then when it's time uh, for the caller to go on air, you will uh, release this one and they will hear everything uh, coming from the, the, the show. So all of the, the mics and, and music and uh, everything. So that would be the best way to do it, but it's one more step. Uh, so you, you need to pay attention to uh, if you are sending the, the mics and everything to the caller or not. And I mean, the easiest way to keep track is to just uh, place the, the caller aux on your, uh, on your main uh, mixing page. So. Uh, Let's do it like this. Uh, basically, you will mute. Come on. Uh, basically, you will mute the 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 caller uh, going out to the PA and the kind of PA going back to the caller. These ones will be muted until it's time to to actually have the caller on the show. Then you would just unmute both of of those. So one thing that I come across uh, quite often is that you, you, are, you are doing a live show that's also uh, streaming uh, and you have the permission to stream the content from the stage but not the, the house music. So the music that's being played uh, before and after the show uh, is not being broadcast. So for that reason uh, the house music is only sent to the to the PA and nowhere else. So yeah, hopefully all of this made sense. Uh, it's basically all of the inputs going to groups and then the groups are going to auxes instead of just to the to the left right. Uh, and that way uh, it's uh, more flexible of what you want to send to where. And then you have all of the color routing, which is really specific to just people calling into a show. I don't know where else you would apply 
uh, that kind of routing. But but it all goes to show that you can do some quite complex routing within the LV1 system if, if you want to and need to. So uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions about this or anything and I'll be happy to answer anything I can and take care.